Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bosch. The number of clean diesel models in North America will double by 2014. Bosch Clean Diesel. Good. Clean. Fun. Bridgestone. Your journey. Our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems. Improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. This is AutoLine Daily for February 2nd, and now the news. Sales of new cars and trucks blew out of the gate in the American market last month. Wards reports that 910,000 vehicles were sold, an 11.5% increase over a year ago. Most impressively, the SAR hit 14.1 million vehicles, a rate that suggests this year will come in almost 1.5 million vehicles higher than last year. The biggest sales gain came from Mazda, which posted a 68% increase. Volkswagen brand was up 48%. The Chrysler Group was up 43%. Jaguar Land Rover up 31%. And Kia was up 28%. The biggest losers were Suzuki down 41%. Mitsubishi was down 17%. And General Motors fell 6%. Saab was actually down more than all of them, but we're not counting Saab. The Toyota Camry was the best-selling car in the United States. The F-Series, the best-selling truck, and the Honda CRV was the best-selling crossover. If this is a sign of things to come, let's get going. 2012 could be a very good year. And not only were sales up in the American market, they were up in Brazil as well. New car sales were just over 268,000 units in January, which is a 9.6% increase compared to a year ago. And that's a pretty good sign because companies like General Motors, Ford, Fiat, and Volkswagen rely heavily on sales in the region. You know, even though General Motors spends less on research and development than companies like Volkswagen or Toyota, the company is number one when it comes to generating patents. For the fourth consecutive quarter, General Motors is tops amongst 183 companies ranked by the Patent Board in its automotive and transportation industry scorecard. GM was granted 1,123 patents in the United States last year. Talk about David and Goliath. Remember that California woman who was suing Honda in small claims court because her Civic Hybrid did not deliver the fuel economy promised on the window sticker? Yeah, in a shocking bit of news, she won the case. The former lawyer opted out of a class action suit against the company in an effort to get a higher settlement, and it worked. She was awarded nearly $10,000. So far, Honda has not issued a statement on that decision. Hey, what is with these Chinese copycats? The other day we showed you a truck built by JAC that is a shameless ripoff of the Ford F-150. Well, that prompted Ross, an Autoline Daily viewer who lives in Queensland, Australia, to send us a picture of the JAC Rennie Ute, which is an unabashed carbon copy of the Chevy Colorado. What I tell you, a shameless copy. This next one was submitted by the gratuitous explosions department of Autoline Daily. It's a clip from the TV show Stunt Busters. Flames and flying cars. Hey, what's cooler than that? I'll tell you what, slow motion. Watch this MG midget tumble and burn at a thousand frames a second. So why'd we pick this story? Because. Hey, coming up next, we'll take a look at the new performance models that Mopar is coming out with. Dow Automotive Systems, driving solutions in automotive, commercial transportation, and aftermarket with innovative products like Betamate structural adhesives. Lighter, stronger, safer. DowBetamate.com. 2012 is an important year for Chrysler's Mopar brand. The motor parts division is celebrating its 75th birthday. From humble beginnings, it's come a long way in the last three quarters of a century. I mean, Mopar uh, started as uh, just a brand for an antifreeze freeze product in 1937. And uh, in these 75 years, uh, has been growing constantly, becoming today a global brand. And Mopar has spread to more than 120 countries around the world. It's also expanding the number of services it offers 
handling things like customer care, aftermarket performance, and of course, replacement parts. Chrysler's alliance with Fiat means more customers in more markets have Mopar as an option the next time their vehicle needs service. We have already today 2.6 million cars belonging to competitive makes that are driving our service line. They may be used cars or, I mean, cars that are simply going and looking for a service. So with a partnership with Magneti Marelli, we gave the opportunity to our dealers to have 30 product lines that will allow them to take care of every, every make, every car. So significantly expanding the business opportunity. And to build customer loyalty, Mopar is working with dealers to improve brand identity by redesigning customer waiting areas. These new spaces will be bright and cheerful with things like wireless internet to make the time spent at a dealership as painless as possible. Parts and maintenance may have been how this brand got started, but today it's so much more than that. We think that uh, everyone who like to have a very unique car, who like to drive a very unique car. Uh, you need a car that is uh, sort of uh, showing your personality. And so we give uh, the opportunity to every customer to personalize the car with our uh, very large uh, array of uh, accessories. And some of its latest aftermarket parts will be showcased on four new specialty vehicles, making their public debuts next week at the Chicago Auto Show. They include a hopped-up Cinquecento, the Fiat 500 Stinger, with a host of appearance upgrades, a modified Dodge Dart called the GTS 210 Tribute. Amongst other changes, it features a carbon fiber hood and an available performance package delivering up to 210 horsepower. Next, we have the Mopar 12 300. Beyond appearance upgrades, this Chrysler features a shorter final drive ratio for faster acceleration and a lowered suspension. Lastly, Jeep joins the mix with the Compass True North. It goes the opposite way by gaining a two-inch lift along with new bodywork. Going forward, we're told Mopar will stay very connected with its heritage of performance and personalization, but it'll also focus on advanced new technology to stay relevant in the next 75 years. Hey, don't forget to join us tonight for AutoLine After Hours. Our guest will be Chris Pruce, the former president of OnStar and former vice president of corporate communications at General Motors. This is going to be a very lively discussion. So join me and the auto extremist, Peter DeLorenzo, for the best insider discussions in the industry. And that wraps up today's show. Join us again tomorrow. <music>